Last night we told you about Lillian Coakley. She's the Nova Scotia woman who says she's upset that the Nova Scotia government won't pay for her surgery to help her reduce her weight fast enough. She's on a 10-year wait list. I didn't think that uh, she had a case. Neither did Ezra Levant, but Dr. Yoni Friedhoff from Ottawa's Bariatric Medical Center does. He joins us now. Dr. Friedhoff, I, I think that it's like several other medical procedures, and governments have to make decisions on where they're going to ration care. You say the economic argument for rationing this care isn't there. It's a poor argument. So studies out of Canada, out of Montreal, demonstrate that the cost of the surgery that Lillian's seeking would be recouped within about three and a half years. And that recoupment comes from the fact that being on a wait list, having extreme obesity, we're not talking about a little bit of weight, but a significant amount of weight. Yeah, because Ezra was joking. He, yeah. You know, I, I think he called himself a fatty, but yeah, he so doesn't need the surgery. We're not talking about Ezra's. Um, we're talking about people with more weight to lose, where more often than not, it associates with a great deal of comorbidity. And that's expensive. So doctor visits, procedures, and problems as a consequence of these comorbidities cost money. Uh, the data suggests that about $900 a month as a dollar cost average per person on a wait list for bariatric surgery. So to make the argument that, you know, taxpayers shouldn't need to do this, uh, I would argue if all we're talking about is taxpayer money, we should actually be doing more of these. Uh, because in the long run, we understand that doing these expeditiously saves taxpayer dollars, doesn't cost taxpayer dollars. Now, we've seen uh, celebrities go through this sort of thing, and then you see them, and they put the weight back on, just like when people lose weight on their own, boom, so they're back a, up. There's so, about a 30% weight regain with bariatric surgery, compared to about a 95% regain of people doing it on their own. So people, including you know Ezra last night, I, mean, I think people in general are making the suggestion that she should just be doing this on her own. The fact is, is that 95% of us fail to do this on our own. What we're saying in her case, and what I'm hearing a lot of people say in commenting on this story, is that, you know, Lillian and other people who are in this situation, well, you know, they fail just like all of us do. They may die as a consequence or have very serious comorbidities as a consequence, markedly impairing their quality of life. But because they fail to do what everybody can't do, well, they're going to get penalized potentially with their lives. Well... Is this, uh, and, and I'll be uh, screamed at if I don't ask this question, this is bariatric, bariatric surgery. You run the Bariatric Medical Center. Do you perform this procedure here no. in Ontario? So it's you, not you, in my you, best interest to be advocating for surgery. You know, I'm a medical weight management program. I just advocate for what's right for people with obesity. The other thing to remember is that this is not a vanity procedure. I mean, this is a procedure that's been proven to extend quantity of life, uh, cure comorbidities, and markedly improve quality of Good. life. Comorbidity, you keep using that. For those of us that aren't doctors? Sure, so things like diabetes, high blood pressure, arthritis, sleep apnea, heartburn. There's a ton of things that associate with obesity. And some of those things are very dramatic and can cause cumulative long-term complications. And so if this were a vanity procedure, all of these arguments would be very fair, but it's not. And so if you think about healthcare, healthcare in Canada, it's not supposed to be about so we operate people... But it was never intended. It was never intended to be a catch-all for everything under the sun. And it's, governments make decisions based on what they're going to cover. Eyesight isn't covered. Here in Ontario, they've delisted chiropractory. They've delisted a lot of services. And other provinces have done the same. You're absolutely right. But here we're talking about a condition that kills people. And that is what the spirit of healthcare in Canada is all about. The example I wanted to provide was a different example than what you heard last night. The example I want to provide is the person who needs coronary bypass surgery because they didn't bother taking their drugs for 20 years, which we see all the time. You know, so this is not unique. And so I agree that health care needs to be metered out, both from an economic perspective and from a consequence of not doing it perspective. That is socialized medicine. But this here, bariatric surgery, meets all of those needs. It is a proven procedure, works in the vast majority of cases, improves quality and quantity of life, and saves taxpayer dollars. I can't think of something that is more in the spirit of healthcare in Canada than bariatric surgery. All right, Dr. Friedhoff, thank you. Thank you. What do you think? Do you agree with the doctor? Send us your views. Is Lillian right? Is the doctor right? Is Ezra right? Let us know.